This series is Simply Jesus, and we're talking about the savage grace of Jesus Christ. If you could with me, turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 7, and we're going to be going down to the end of the chapter. Stay with me. And while we do this, we're going to be talking about two stories that come together to show the vastness of Jesus' grace that is for everyone. In Luke chapter 7, we see here that Jesus is having encounters with different people. But in doing so, he's still graceful. Now, what is grace? Grace is you receiving a gift that you don't deserve. I remember when I was 16 years old that my parents bought me my first car. And this car was, of course, a used car. And now that I think back on it, I was happy that they got me a car to move around, but I probably wasn't as grateful as I should have been. And now that I'm older, I realize that, man, keeping up with bills and maintaining a car and all these different types of things, dude, my parents made a huge sacrifice for me to make sure that I'd be able to move around. And now I'm even more grateful because I'm not shameful of this used car, but I'm happy about what it does for me. Jesus does the same thing. He offers to us something even greater than a car. He offers to us salvation for our souls. But so many times people are afraid to accept the grace of God. They're afraid to come to church. They're afraid to get saved. They're afraid to get their life together because they're like, man, I feel shameful or I'm guilty because of what I've done. I don't deserve the grace of God. I'm not ready to get my life together. But Jesus here says that I don't want a perfect person. Jesus wants you. And so here in this passage, we see him talk about two different people. The first person he's talking about in verse 34 is John the Baptist. John the Baptist was his cousin, this holy leader who came from a priestly lineage. This guy could do no wrong. He lived out in the desert. He got the message of Jesus Christ early. He was known as the forerunner for the gospel. This guy was out there declaring the grace of Jesus Christ, paving a way for him. He did great missional work for God. And he, Jesus says, understood the grace of God. Then we move to the next passage, down in verse 40, around there, where Jesus has an encounter sitting with the Pharisees who do not accept his grace, with a woman who comes into their dinner room, and she gets down on her feet. She begins bawling and crying, asking for Jesus to embrace her. And she pours perfume on his feet. And yes, Jesus says, even that person also, this woman who came in unashamed, to which even one of the Pharisees says, Jesus, do you not know who that person is? That is a sinful woman. She was marked by sin. But Jesus says, even her, she, yes, can also receive the grace of God. God's grace is wide ranging. There's no one on the face of this earth who does not deserve, who who cannot receive the grace of God. Yes, we don't deserve it, but God offers it to us anyway. What is it that's stopping you from getting the grace of God? What is it that's blocking you from receiving what he has for you? God wants to make your life new again. He wants to forgive you of your sins. He wants to give you a new start and a new chance, just like he gave that woman who got down on her feet. But so many times we're stopping ourselves from receiving God's gift. I hope that you can look through this chapter and read through the story and see the example that Jesus gives of how he loves on everyone. Let us pray. God, let the record show that there is no life so broken, that there is no person so enslaved, that there is no sin so powerful, whether it be lying, cheating, 
whether it be that we have disrespected our brother or sister, whether it has been that we have a record, whatever it is, let the record show that nothing can stop the grace of God from reaching us. In Jesus' name we pray.